Oh, goody. All right. What's going on, everybody? Zombies here again. And today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. So today we're taking a look at Scream, one of the new cards that released yesterday. Now, Scream is the card I was most excited about uh, for this season. Scream is a 2-2 that reads, whenever an enemy card moves, drain two power from it once per turn. So really, really cool card here. Uh, and it is providing some much needed support to the move your opponent's cards archetype, uh, which is something I've always enjoyed, but has kind of fallen out of the meta a long time ago with cards like Spider-Man and Polaris. Many of you might remember from the early silky smooth days. In terms of if you should pick up Scream, uh, the spotlight caches this week are Man-Thing and Mobius, both very good cards, but both also Series 4 cards that I'm sure many people own at this point. I think if you don't own Man-Thing, this is a slam dunk week, as long as you like playing the move your opponent's cards type of stuff, and obviously if you don't own any of them, uh, that makes it even better. Uh, but if Scream is the only card you're looking for this week, it might be better to go with tokens, uh, because I think in general, uh, even though the card quality is very high, uh, these cards are ones a lot of people own, so maybe it's better to save your spotlight caches uh, for a week where you're missing more cards and opt to use tokens if you have them on Scream. Uh, so is Scream good enough to bring these kinds of decks back? Uh, I think it is. I do think it is enough to bring them back, uh, but they are going to be looking a bit different. And I think the thing that a lot of people have been trying, which is just jamming all the move your opponent's cards in one deck and then kingpin and whatnot, uh, I think that is going to have a bit more limited potential in terms of the metagame we're in right now, uh, in part because of the other new card release, Agent Venom, uh, who has been very, very strong in boosting up the bounce archetype. But we're going to save Agent Venom talk for another time. For now, we're going to focus on Scream. Uh, and I have four different decks here that I've been finding quite a bit of success with with Scream. Now, you can do the Kingpin stuff. You can do the just jam all the, the move card stuff in there if you want. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, uh, but I do think it does line up poorly into some decks that are very popular. Uh, like Bounce. Bounce just does way too many points for you to deal with, and you don't have any interaction. Same with things like Hella. Uh, these decks are just too big on power and you aren't running any meaningful ways to interact with that power. So I think you have to take a little bit of a different approach with Scream currently just because of the popularity of those other decks. Uh, this is the first one I've been liking quite a lot. The idea with this deck being we do have a good amount of ways to move opponents cards around with Juggernaut, Polaris, Spider-Man, and Arrow, uh, but we also just have a general good card package here in the Kitty, Thena, Angela trio. Silver Sable as one of the one drops of choice here, just one of the best statted one drops. Uh, you could also consider Hydra Bob in that spot, uh, but I do like Sable mainly because of the fact that I always know where she's going to be at the end of the game, whereas you don't always know that with Bob. Uh, Hope Summers really helps us get that extra energy out there and we get some more value off of our kitty stuff. Although I do think you could try other stuff in the Hope spot. Initially, I put Hope in here uh, because we had more top ends like Magneto. I've opted to sense trim the deck down a bit. So maybe you don't need Hope Summers quite as much as you used to, uh, but there have definitely still been times where she is useful. So uh, still have been liking her in the deck. Uh, and then the big tech card of choice here is Cosmo. I firmly believe with the amount of bounce running around right now, you need a way to respect it. And Cosmo or Eliath seem to be the best two ways to respect bounce while also respecting a bunch of other powerful decks in the game right now. So Cosmo has been an absolute game winner, uh, especially against Shadow King. Because Bounce is popular, Shadow King is getting more popular too. This deck does a lot of buffing and debuffing, so naturally you want a way to protect those buffs you spent all this time working on. Uh, so Cosmo, I think, is going to become uh, a very, very meta-relevant tech card. 
So that's the first deck. Let's take a look at the rest of them here. Next up, we have a Wiccan deck. Uh, I've liked this one quite a bit too, uh, though I have been considering trying to find space for Juggernaut or Cosmo in here as well. Uh, maybe in the Elsa spot, but Elsa is really good too, so kind of hard to find cuts here sometimes. But in general, we are rocking the traditional Wiccan core, so uh, we have a good critical mass of one drop. So you have Maria Hill to help guarantee us having that turn to play uh, so we can get Wiccan out and get that extra energy ramping. Kate Bishop also helps with that as well, giving us more arrows to help fill out our curve. Uh, since we have a lot of cheaper cards, it's easier to get value off of Elsa, who's always good with things like Kitty. Uh, Polaris, Spider-Man, and Arrow, again, acting as our main activators for Scream. Wiccan gets our ramp going. Uh, Claw, definitely one of the flex spots here, but I have liked it quite a bit, especially against Clog decks, which are still pretty prominent. Uh, once they clog you up on a lane, they think you don't have a way to get back into that lane. And, and so Claw can steal some cubes versus them pretty easily. Uh, Arrow is a lot better when you have a little bit of extra energy, so she's not the only thing you're doing when you play her on turn 5 or turn 6. Uh, and then Eliath, just because it's really good into a lot of stuff in the meta right now. Uh, this deck is pretty decent. I get This deck is pretty solid at getting ahead on priority, especially if you get Wiccan out. Uh, so being able to have Eliath to slam the door and turn off all those powerful text on opponent's cards is really good. Another approach you can take here is with a Ajax tempo deck. Uh, I've liked this one quite a lot as well. You also get the benefit of running Luke Cage against all the other people doing like Scream or Affliction stuff, which is pretty good. Uh, Red Guardian, definitely your flex spot in here. I had it mainly because I really liked it against the Madam Web decks, but those have seemed to go down in popularity. So it's entirely possible getting Cosmo in here as well is the right decision or even something like Juggernaut. Uh, but I do value Red Guardian in a card you're just able to play down very easily on turn three and can sometimes blow out opponents if they play something early where they really want the effect on that card. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty similar to a lot of the other Ajax decks you've seen. We have a bunch of different ways to add Affliction to opponents' cards, uh, with Man-Thing and US Agent both being very strong ways to do that. Man-Thing probably being the better one right now, since uh, with the release of Agent Venom, a lot of people are playing cheaper decks, uh, lower cost, lower to the ground. Uh, so US Agent isn't getting quite as much value in those matchups, but still generally a good card overall. Uh, we have another small move package here with Polaris Spider-Man, and you could opt to put in another card there if you want, like Jug in the Red Guardian spot, uh, if you want another way of getting value out of Scream. But sometimes Polaris and Spider-Man are just enough to get good Scream value. I mean, even if you just get one Scream pull, Scream is essentially a 2-6, uh, which is very, very good stat-wise. Uh, we have Miles for a stat stick. Hydra Bob gives us another moving card that's also a stat stick, which can enable the Miles. Uh, and then obviously Ajax is going to be the big threat we have when in combination with Hazmat to just pump him up to the moon and Kate Bishop to help fill out our curve a little bit. Luke Cage has been getting quite a lot of value for me since so many other people are trying out Scream, so I've liked him in this list. I do think you could make some modifications to this list though, depending on what you're running into right now. Like I said, US Agent hasn't been getting quite as much value because there have been so many uh, low cost decks, so maybe a White Widow in that spot could be good. Uh, as well as just another way for us to trigger Scream, whether that be Juggernaut or maybe even something a little higher costed like Stegron. But in general, I'm pretty happy with this list. If you like doing the Ajax tempo thing, this is a cool way to add Scream into the mix. And last but not least, we have a Silver Surfer deck. So I saw KX4M playing this one. I believe he ran Jug over Cosmo, uh, but I'm trying out Cosmo in that spot just because I think Cosmo answers some things that Jug doesn't, uh, most notably Bounce, uh, where Jug isn't quite as effective versus Bounce uh, because they often are filling up all the spots on their board, but you definitely could try Jug in that spot as well, again, if you want more value out of the Scream. Uh, but getting to play Polaris and Spider-Man in Surfer again has been really fun and Killmonger value is at an all-time high due to the high prevalence of bounce in the metagame. Other than that, this is just a normal Surfer list. I mean, Surfer lists are kind of pretty solved at this point. Uh, they just have so many good quality three drops. You have Absorbing Man to copy Brood, 
or copy your Gwenpool. Sometimes I even use Absorbing Man uh, on Polaris or Spider-Man if there's nothing else to do, because that's just another way of getting some additional scream value as well and disrupting where your opponent's cards are on the board. Uh, so I was a little hesitant when I saw Scream Surfer at first. I didn't think it would really be worth the include. I've been pleasantly surprised at how strong it seemed in this archetype. And yeah, that's going to wrap it up for my top four Scream decks that I've played since launch. I really like all of these decks. I think they're all very fun and they play out fairly differently. Again, if you want to just jam all the, the move cards into one deck and Scream, you can. It's fun. Uh, but I do think it doesn't line up as well into the metagame as a lot of the ones I chose to cover in this video. So do with that information what you will. Uh, but let me know in the comments, did you pick up Scream? Have you been enjoying her? Uh, I really was excited for this card, mainly because just bringing back Arrow and the move your opponent stuff archetype. Uh, and so far, to me, she has been living up to the hype. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.